Hello, everyone. Hello. Oops. Okay. Am I there? I am there. Good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals, and journaling. We will be speaking quite a bit this evening about journaling and just about everything and anything that's going to keep you inspired. So welcome, very happy to see you all. Also like to mention, I don't have a shop. I am unaffiliated. I am not here to sell you pens. I'm just a guy who lives in Massachusetts, just talking about his life, his experiences with fountain pens, and all my other aspirations and whatever else I can draw into this crazy little world of ours. So welcome to everyone. I see quite a few of you are already here. That always warms my heart. I see a lot of the usual suspects. Very, very happy to see you all there. I see a bunch of likes flying by. Thanks for the likes. The likes are always appreciated and it keeps the YouTube algorithm well-fed and happy. So I appreciate that as well. So thanks for the attention, guys, and thanks for attending. So um, we have a very interesting show for you tonight, and it's going to get deep. It's, we're going very profound. We're going to talk about why I quit journaling and what the circumstances would have to be and were for Hemingway Jones, your buddy, your pal, the person who is constantly speaking about the benefits of journaling, what would make that well run dry to the point where I had to step away? I'm going to tell you that story. And the best part is it's happening in real time. And I think it's a tremendous opportunity to share this with you because I know we all have the same struggles. We're all on this road, we all have our ups and downs, and we share it together. So I think we can learn from this in your own journaling and your own fountain pen journey too, because quite a bit of it has to do with fountain pens as well. So that's our main topic, and it's also why we don't have any guests tonight. It would just be an odd transition. Let's, let's just say that, and you'll see why as we go forward. And I'm sure we'll bring guests back, so don't worry. And if you're an Illuminati member, you probably want to come on, but don't worry. There will be time. We're, we're in it for the long haul. And um, speaking about membership, if you'd like to support the channel, membership is available. And there's a few things I need to say about membership tonight. One is many of you are coming up on your year anniversary as members. I noticed that this evening as I went down the list of members and um, I have to tell you that's really moving. It's just such a vote of confidence for me, for the channel, for your experience here and, and the value I hope I'm providing for you each week when you tune in to either the live show or whatever bit of video I might post that week. So. That was very moving and I really appreciate it and I really want to thank all the members, but especially those that are sticking with me. So thank you for that. It means a lot. And you're coming up on your year anniversary and that's huge. So um, I guess in a couple of weeks we'll be celebrating that together. So thank you to the members. We're also going to have a Zoom meeting soon. I, I asked Terry to set one up soon. We're hammering out the details, maybe this weekend. If not this weekend, then next weekend. I can't be trusted with setting up Zoom meetings. You guys know I sent all kinds of links that, I, I don't know, I think people ended up in like a cooking channel or uh, someone discussing how to more efficiently pave roads. I think that's where I sent people. So we're going to have a professional do it and keep it nice and organized so everyone shows up, including myself, to our Zoom meeting. And if you wonder what I'm speaking about, it's just that it's another benefit of membership. We do Zoom meetings so you can talk to me directly, not just through email. And we're still doing the letter exchange. So if you want to join, become an Illuminati, a Cognoscenti 
member, you can exchange letters with me. And if you are one of those members and you haven't heard from me, please email me because I don't want anyone to slip through the cracks. My email is super easy. It's on my profile page. It's just Hemingway Jones at iCloud. So fire away and we can correspond. Wouldn't that be grand? So once again, wow, thanks for all the likes, guys. I see them flying by. Always appreciated. So thank you. Thank you for that. So we have a video coming out this week. I think you guys are going to like this one. It's my review of the Lamy 2000 that was generously donated to the channel, or to me personally, by Brendan over at Atlas Stationers. So actually, such a lovely thing. He's a great guy, as you all know. And he thought it would be really funny and a and just a nice gesture if he included it in a pen order. I had ordered this Aurora uh, Optima, which I'm enjoying. I'm going to talk about this at some time. This is a bit of a struggle. This is one of those pens you get and you struggle with a bit. And it's going to make for a fun video at some point when I'm ready to produce that. Quite a small pen, by the way. We're diverse. A little bit of a tributary here, but I think it's worth it. It becomes really lovely, perfectly sized when you post it. And the jeweled sort of ink view window, fantastic. Fantastic. So I will have a lot to say. I can see I have beautiful uh, Eclat de Saphir ink in here. Gorgeous. So Brendan sent the Lamy 2000, and I did a review... And I call it something like the review I never thought I'd make, a Lamy 2000 from someone who hated it. It's called something along those lines. Very true. Because far be it from me to uh, clickbait you guys. Always deliver on my titles. Always do. Though some people take my titles really literally, I, I must add. Had a couple of people literally answering my rhetorical questions. Like when I say... Is the Estabrook Raven the coolest fountain pen ever made? You you can answer it, but it's a rhetorical question. I had someone t say, "Well, you didn't you didn't answer that question in your video." And I was thinking, "Did you watch my video because I kind of think I did, but coolness isn't one of those traits that are easy to nail down and they're fun to talk about. I'd rather talk about that when Helen's with me. And I think you guys would enjoy it more when Helen's with me. And I'm sure the Estabrook Raven will be on a future episode of Cool or Not Cool. Um, and I have a feeling it will be very cool. It's another one of my pen check pens, by the way, guys. This is the Estabrook SD. Raven in matte black. Um, Brian from Estherbrook was kind enough to send this to me. He sent me an extra fine. He sent me the cartridge converter version. I rather wish he had sent me the vacuumatic version. But beggars cannot be choosers, ladies and gentlemen. And I do love cartridge converters too. Because, hey, if something should happen, super easy to just switch it out with another converter. But this is a really cool pen, a really effective pen. The extra fine is extraordinarily smooth. I'm having a lot of fun with this, a lot of fun. Now, psychologically, I have a little bit of a sort of brain glitch when I use an extra fine. I feel like I should be able to get a, a wide line out of it by bending hard. Now, I'm not doing that, but psychologically, it occurs to me. Because normally when I use extra fines, it's in a calligraphy nib like the Mont Blanc 146. But I'll, I'll say my handwriting with this pen is really interesting. So the matte black really makes a big difference. And I think it makes a big statement because Estherbrook is known for such bright, vivid colors. And then to do something purely matte black, it's just really cool. And it's just really well developed. Um, designed and well executed with the glossy clip 
that breaks up the mat and the glossy nib and the two bands right there by where the section screws in all that great stuff so really interesting fun pen great to use and i'm not posting it i'm not i posted it for the video i always like to show it it's right where i can write without posting it's perfect i could post it but now that feels comically long to me now i am definitely becoming an ex poster in many regards many many regards i see kurt is agreeing with me that the raven is cool so i have a couple more pens i want to share as like pen checks and these are the pens right now that i'm using either at work at home writing letters this is the omas ojiva a lot of people are bent out of shape because somebody bought the Omas name and all their plans. And that's how business works. People buy trademarks and produce pens under that name because they have the legal right to do it. So someone else could have done it. They didn't. Um, but this group did. And they're producing this pen. This pen now exists. It is an individual occurrence of an Omas Ojiva. It's in my possession. It's a medium. How is it? It's really nice. It's lovely to work with. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has a very luscious nib. I am not posting it, by the way. It kind of posts. I don't feel like it posts very well. Just sort of shallow posting. Not a fan of shallow posting, but I'm not really a fan of any posting these days. But definitely long enough that I can write like this very effectively. Gorgeous pen. I have Mont Blanc Midnight Blue in here. Very cool ink. Very, very cool pen. Absolutely gorgeous. Another pen that was sent to me. Um, but I do enjoy it. Now I am going to do a full review. There's a couple things about it that we can talk about. Not everything is roses, but it's extraordinary. The one issue I'm having is that occasionally my nib gets really inky. And I'm wondering if it's going to be one of those pens, although not yet, where it's all covered in ink at some point. Like, it just seems inky. Like, I just cleaned it and it gets inky again. So I'm keeping an eye on it. I, I just get a feeling that this is a fountain pen. You know our fountain pens that don't like to be jostled? I think this is one of them. This is probably a desk pen for me. It's going to live here. It's not going anywhere. Maybe I should take it to work and see how it travels. So there's that. I have another pen with a story. And then we'll go, we're going to get to our topic. So don't worry. We're definitely getting to our main topic. I think you guys are going to appreciate it. <sighs> I got a lot of energy tonight. I'm sorry I dressed down, too, by the way. I was just really cozy. You know, it's that transitional time here in Massachusetts. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, um, at least look me up over there and go check this photo I put up of what my street looks like right now. Because we're getting very close to peak foliage. And I live in an area of apple orchards and farms. It's really a nice part of Massachusetts. It's where a lot of Boston people come to pick apples. It's really lovely. And my street is particularly beautiful. We get a lot of cyclists and things and things. What else is there besides cyclists? I don't know. Cyc runners and cyclists. And they enjoy the foliage and everything else. So I put a picture up of what that looks like. But it's kind of that cozy time of year when you want to have like... A really nice cup of tea or coffee and your book and just enjoy a nice warm afternoon speaking of books I got this a little late guys this would have been really nice to have for the Raven um, video the Raven video that you saw last week that I put out in support of the Raven pen I made that in two days so I filmed it and then I edited it and it had to be ready for the launch. I wanted it up on launch day. 
So that was me working in a hurry. And I think I did a pretty nice job. I would take points off. I didn't own Edgar Allan Poe anymore. And I felt bad about that. I actually put Sherlock Holmes, this book, which was as close as I could get <laughs> in my collection. Um, but I have since bought this edition, real nice edition. Sadly, I got it from Amazon. Um, but it, it has really nice, kind of warm pages, the kind you want to snuggle with. And I've read a bunch of poems to Imogen. And she enjoyed them. I read to her Annabelle Lee, which she quite liked. And she also really appreciated To Helen, which um, is appropriate, right? So I also read The Raven to her. And I, we all are very familiar with the Raven. The one thing interesting about reading it and reading it out loud to someone else is that the rhythm is sort of similar to the rhythm of um, Gene Wilder in uh, Willy Wonka doing that whole speech he does when they're on the little boat and he's doing scaring everyone. It's got a very similar rhythm to that. So read to Helen, read Annabelle Lee, the Raven, and the fairy one, Fairyland. And she really enjoyed it. So, of course, I'm also watching Mike Flanagan's Fall of the House of Usher right now. So I wanted to revisit his short story. So super happy to have this. Super happy. Oh, I need to single one of you out for being lovely. The man, the myth, the legend, Laddie Gardner with a $25 hour super chat. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much for the support of the channel. Lad, you mean the world to me and I really appreciate it. We go back and forth in emails quite a bit, Lad and I, and we enjoy it quite a bit. Different ideas and concepts and Lad's cool that you can just interact with them and and. Uh, I never get offended. He never gets offended. And we have these great conversations. So thank you for your support, my friend. I'm always there for you. I really appreciate it. Achiro, who changed his profile pic, almost didn't recognize you, um, likes the bells. Yeah, that, that's the bells knelling and all that. I like that one too. Yeah, so, so I do recommend this version. I, I haven't shelved it yet. It's sort of living here. And if you want to know what I'm actually reading, I'm reading the Starless Sea. Starless Sea. Oh, okay. So I have one more pen, then we're going to get to our main topic. I don't want you guys to wait forever. You know I like to postpone things, though. I like to build up suspense. You know the Oscar Wilde line, right? Ah, and it ties back to Gene Wilder, too. It's The suspense is killing me. I hope it will last. Because Gene Wilder says that in Willy Wonka. So... Avec boys. I'm looking forward to hearing about journaling. It's going to happen very soon. I have to psych myself up. So, another pen. A very important pen of mine. One of my flux monsters. There's a video coming up, probably in December. I'm now making videos for December. I feel like the regular season is kind of done. The autumn season's done. And now I'm kind of doing extras. At the end of December, I don't post anything because nobody's watching YouTube. I mean, hardly anybody's watching it now. And then it gets to nobody. So this is my beloved Waterman 52 and a half. Do you guys remember this one? Interesting pen. Super small, super slim. But this one you have to post. And when you do, it becomes perfectly sized now this is a very slim very elegant has a lot of like feminine energy it's got a nib like a brush you can do thin to fat and consequently I'm kind of doing this new way of writing you're going to see in letters that I write to you guys if you're Illuminati and Cognoscenti and you're in the letter exchange if not you can join get in it I'm also put it in the videos and I've copied this from vintage handwriting where you don't just connect in cursive single words, but multiple words and sometimes sentences 
in sometimes sort of daft ways. I think it's really cool and this pen is perfect for doing it because when you ease up on it, it's like filigree. And when you press down, you get a double broad line. So it's very good. If you flex a lot though, you'll get railroading and eventually it just stops. But if you write sensibly and quickly, you can get a very vintage looking hand, especially if you do kooky things like take a period and then draw a line over to a H and then put a T in front of it and link two words that way. I think you dig that. Maybe I'll do a video on that. Maybe I will. So, oh yes. So a big thing about this pen, it's one of my flex monsters and I want to make a flex monsters video. Um, I kind of like coining terms. Have you noticed that? We have mac and cheese pens. I'm kind of hoping that one day one of these things will catch on and I'll hear someone else say, oh, this is one of my mac and cheese pens. And I'll be like, look at that. It gets around. It's culture. Culture is an exchange. And I'd be very pleased. Um, the other one is Flex Monsters. And this is one of my Flex Monsters. So I'm giving away one of my top five Flex Monsters. But if you've been watching this channel for more than five minutes, you would know that this was one of them. And you probably could name all the other ones too. But that's a video that's coming up. Ooh, Simon Krupa asks... Will there be a Halloween themed episode? Sadly not. Um, I didn't think to produce one in advance. The closest is probably the Raven. Uh, the Estherbrook Raven. Which I did consider releasing Halloween week. But I had to match the release. Maybe we'll do a Halloween themed live? Next week? Would next week or the week after? I'm not sure when Halloween is. I have to think about that. But sadly, I wasn't that creative in advance. Maybe next time. But there is a Thanksgiving themed. There is that. It's filmed. It's ready to go. Okay. So this is one of my flex monsters. And it broke. The little bladder has a very small bladder. So you don't want to take it on a long road trip. It broke. And I sent it to one of my one of the members and viewers of the channel a very lovely gentleman you guys all know and his name is Benjo Markland and he fixed it for me very quickly and very very well so it now works like a dream again still doesn't hold that much ink but um, that's okay it's just fun to write with and when you flex a lot it uses a lot of ink um, but he fixed the bladder perfectly gave it a good once over and he's also the only person that watches the show that's ever used one of my pens so that's kind of cool except for Gino who bought one of my pens I just remembered that so good on you Gino so anyway so here we have it it's back but what I was going to say is Ben Joe maybe if you have a pen issue you can reach out to Benjo and maybe he'll help you as well. So thanks, buddy. I really appreciate it. It's working well. Okay. Now I'm going to take a drink because i got to psych myself up for the main, the main event. Okay? That's um, iced tea. I'm losing weight, by the way. I am... Waski Squirrel says, bladders are a simple fix. I'm planning to release a video on that soon. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, well, I'll be waiting on that, my friend. The great Waski Squirrel who joined us last week in a fantastic episode of Live Show. I hope you guys saw it. Hi, Jason. Hope you're well. <sighs> okay, so I guess I've delayed long enough. So now we're going to talk about journaling. Right. This is my journal. You guys know these journals. I have them made by Bottega Obscura out of Italy. I have a few more. I haven't even written yet back here. Now, what's interesting is I started this journal on November 27th, 2022, and I've only gone this far in. Which is extraordinary for me because normally I'd fill up a journal like this in about six months. So what happened is that 
I often have trouble journaling when I'm happy. I find that I'm more prolific when I'm going through troubles. So while I was mostly happy, because most things in my life are just moving along swimmingly, that I wasn't journaling as much. Still journaling. I, I talk a lot about YouTube in here. <laughs> I, I do. Um, I talk a lot about my other creative pursuits and travel and all sorts of stuff. Every trip I've taken in the last year is in here. Everything's in here. But what is it that got me to quit journaling is something else entirely. And this happened around two weeks ago. And what happened is, what happened is that I have right now received my first, hopefully my first of many, which might sound morbid and bizarre, but follow me here. So I've received kind of my first like major health scare. Um, after living my life like I'm immortal and not really realizing my own age because I am much older than I realize I am. <laughs> you know, not that I'm that old. Oh, sorry. But I'm older than I think I am. So, I mean, we all lag in our consciousness. So I'm 56 and that's right about the age that Americans with our poisoned water supplies and poisoned food supplies get our first big health scares. And I really hope this is the first of many and not the last of the first. Because it's something I'm still dealing with and I don't know the full extent and, and I'm not saying this for sympathy. I don't even like I don't want sympathy. It's about journaling. It's um and I'm also not, I'm not, well, let's tell the story. So you get this news and the thing is something that I knew was wrong for a very long time and no one was listening to me because our healthcare is abysmal too here, as you guys know, if you live in the United States. So it's like you just keep going back to your doctor and they keep telling you that it's something and it's nonsense like oh you need physical therapy and it's like look come on seriously you know and of course it doesn't work and then you're like all right great and then another year goes by and being a I, I don't want to make this like I was going to say being a man but I don't want to make it like gendered. I, I think we're all kind of have this idea of duty. It's like you work until you die. You work, you provide for your family, you square your family away. And that's your duty. And if you die in the midst of it, that's just what happens. Like you're kind of born to do that. So it's like, it's like, um, you, you just, nobody's listening to to you when you're saying that there's something wrong so i finally get my doctor to take it seriously they do a sonogram they find something but i already told them there's something and it's something that's particularly rare and potentially awful potentially but um i'm smiling because i'm thinking of how much I panicked when I was told. And I was not just panicked, but how it just was like an earthquake in my life that changed the entire topography of my life. What had seemed like a mountain was suddenly a valley. The things that weren't as important a few days prior were lifted up into the sky. So suddenly all my priorities and my, my hopes and dreams and everything else were rearranged in an instant. instant. Oddly, my feelings are never like, oh, you know, it's a sad. I might end up, you know, checking out and slipping into the great void of nothingness. 
it wasn't that. It was more like, I have things to do. I have to make sure my daughter gets to where she needs to be. And I don't want to leave her in the place that sadly my father had to leave me because my father died when I was 18 months old. You know, my daughter's a little older. She's about the age of my brother, by the way. Um, I don't want that to happen. Now, all of that is crazy talk because there's a lot of steps in between a health scare and what it could possibly be and that. You know what I mean? That's a panic and it's perfectly normal and we all go through it because your mind defaults to the worst that can happen. There's tons of steps in between and, and everything else. So at first I freaked out um, intensely, but worse than freaking out, I drifted away. And that's where the journaling part comes in. And I think this is where we can connect as people, you and me, when you're journaling and, and something like this comes along. For me, mostly my struggles and my fears were all based on depression and fighting these really tough emotions that were holding me down and back as a person that were either creating anger within me like self-loathing and just this feeling that I wanted to not exist and they were based on my mental health at the time and I would journal my way through that but I've never been confronted by an existential crisis that's out of my control that it's just my body let me down that's saying like, well, sorry, buddy, this is all you get. Um, that's a possibility. There, that's how life works. Life is very random. You have as much a chance of living a long, happy, fulfilling life as you do a very short, miserable and tortured life. You can survive something or not. It's all random. That's just how it works. And I'm at peace with that bit. As I said, it's it's my daughter and it's also my attitude that comes into play so I was talking to my wife about stuff and we're kind of talking things through and we you know I was saying or I don't even feel like I'm here I um hey Allie I read your comment now I'm with you like you know email me like we can talk sincerely I, I was talking to my wife and I said to her, I, I feel like I'm not here. I'm drifting away. I'm, I'm not even, even tethered to the world anymore. My concerns are not the cons I was like Dr. Manhattan. Like I was thinking cosmically and, and it's all out of that panic. But then I'm confronted by this. This is my tool, my tool of coping is journaling it's this and I'd sit there and I was like I I don't care anymore I don't care about putting words in here words don't mean anything for me right now and I tried for a couple days and it was giving me even more pressure the blank page was mocking and I felt that I could simply write a few mundane descriptions of my day and I did but I couldn't get at any essence of me anymore because it had already departed it was it was gone so it was really a struggle because I felt like a piece of me was already out of the room. So as I started to progress through this process of dealing with things, and by the way, it's still going on. Like, I don't know yet. MRI is next, um, which is dreadful and doubly dreadful because it's at seven in the morning. Like, uh, you know, they scheduled seven in the morning. Like, make it a nice time, you know? noon noon would be nice 
So, you know, I got to do that. But this is the thing. I forgot who I was for a good solid week and I had to quit journaling entirely. And even fountain pens in a way, I couldn't make videos. I couldn't I couldn't find the language anymore to form the kind of sentences I love in my scripts and in my impromptu um, um, <laughs> like I'm doing right now. Spe like the kind of way I'm speaking right now. I just couldn't find the words. I couldn't find the expressions. My analogies were failing me. I just felt really, really off. And I had to quit. I had to quit it all. I had to put it all down. Now, I know it's a very brief period of time. But time collapses. Time expands. An instant can be an eternity if it's your last instant. I don't think flies think they have brief lives. They probably think they have long, fulfilling lives. Um, it's all relative, right? But in that moment... I had to quit. I had to take all the pressure off me. And it's it's funny. What changed everything was the Esterbrook. And it reminds me a little bit of... It reminds me of the Tom Hanks movie Castaway. And I've always liked the movie Castaway. Because he gets on this island... Sets up a life, tries to survive. He, after he tries not to survive, he sort of goes through all these different ways of sort of trying to deal with this situation, trying to survive, and then trying to escape. And very pointedly, the movie gives him a piece of a toilet. And that's what he's able to use to escape. So it's, it's like... The weirdest things can save you. And in this case, it was a beautiful thing. It was a lovely gesture from a friend who sent me a pen that just inspired me. And it kind of brought me back to center, which was great. It gave me inspiration again because there was a built-in narrative with the pen. And it was enough that I was able to kind of check myself and then say... Look, you've been through a lot of stuff in your life. People get scary health scares. People survive a lot. And I am dedicated to being the revenant. If someone needs to chop off a piece of me for me to survive, it's going. You guys are just going to have to deal with someone with a hole through their chest or, or whatever it is. I am not stopping regardless because I have things I must do. But at the point where Imogen's grown up, I'm okay. I've, I've done a lot. I mean, one of the things that really scared me is I almost feel like I'm kind of at the end of my narrative arc. I started out, I think, as kind of an awful narcissistic person with a lot of anger issues and a lot of things that I needed to resolve and heal. And I wanted to be a better person. I wanted to be a heroic person. I wanted to be someone who did their duty, who had a loving, close relationship with their wife and their friends. I wanted all this. I wasn't sure I was ever capable of it. And then I did that. I changed. It's almost impossible to go from a narcissistic personality type to a more overt, open, and loving personality type. Luckily, I have fantastic support, and I don't think I ever really was as awful as I was acting. So I just gave up a persona and allowed myself to be myself. So that makes a beautiful narrative arc. But I'm just not done, guys. I'm not done. And I'm not saying that this thing is existential. It's just weird. What it is is weird. And I'd like to tell you, but I don't even fully know the extent of it. I won't know until the MRI is, is done. But it's just when you get 
a weird thing and the doctor's like wow this is incredibly rare <laughs> you know it's the last thing you want to hear um i have since spoken to some other people who have had it and have shook it off so i am more and more confident unless i am very 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 unlucky and in my life i have not been very unlucky but once again life is chaotic things can happen some point you're not so everything works out for you until it doesn't and we always ascribe meaning to the past you don't ascribe meaning to the future that hasn't happened yet because we rationalize we rationalize behind us so but still I still feel like at the end of this I'm going to have a scar and a really good story which I will probably be sharing with all of you in some future live but what it did do is it silenced my journaling voice it silenced my creativity in every sense but talking to my wife and talking my fears through with her whereas in the past I would have armored myself and not interacted would not have spoken to anyone but I love my wife I wouldn't want her to have to deal with a sarcophagus instead of a person so I spoke with her I talked my fears through with her and you know, it, it just started to sound um, silly, like I was worrying too much. For one thing, except for that issue, I have never felt better in my life. In fact, I, I'm dieting now. I'm, I've like lost like 10 pounds. You probably can't tell on my face, but I was getting really, really dad body, like in a big way. And my pants weren't fitting. I think we talked about this. And for me, that's that's it I don't want to buy new pants I just I like my pants and I have a lot of pants and I just wanted them all to fit so I cut out a lot of junk food and I've been eating very healthy and very well and I feel great like I've never felt better so I just get like even if in a worst case scenario I'm still here for a long time you know like it would take like probably 10 15 years because I just feel so good so so my wife, you know, once again, guys, like love, love with your whole hearts, your spouse, even if you're, if you're somewhat estranged or, or whatever it is, if you haven't found someone yet, when you do find someone you can speak with and just, just lay it out there. Strength is being vulnerable. Strength is not clamming up and building a fortress around yourself. So that's my advice. And then Estherbrook was lovely to give me some inspiration. And they sent this with a built-in narrative that super fired my creativity. I went out and I made that video I was very proud of. The video did quite well. Even though you guys didn't seem to like my traveling with fountain pens video. Which made me very sad. Very sad. Such a good video. Some of the best B-roll. There's a rainbow in that video you should watch it so um so this was very inspirational and another thing i'll say in that video i'm wearing a corduroy suit that i bought from courtings of piccadilly that i could not fit in that was the whole impetus for me to say all right i need to lose some weight because i buy a, a lot of my clothes if not all my clothes from courtings of piccadilly and i got the suit and i couldn't button up the pants so i was like that's it i'm drawing a line and you see, I was wearing it very comfortably in that video. So, progress can be made. Progress can sincerely be made. Lag Gardner says, so lucky to be among the people in this channel. Amazing group. I couldn't say that any better. You guys are amazing. You guys keep me motivated because YouTube hardly ever shows my videos beyond you guys, beyond the people that are already subscribers. So without you guys, I would not be as motivated as I am. And I need this. I need some academic exchange. I need to be able to put concepts out there. 
And that's why sometimes like the tedium draws me down. This week I was I was cantankerous. Like normally trolls in the comments I ignore. This like week I I took them on. Like I was I was putting all that energy somewhere and there it was. So Kaylee says it was a double rainbow. It was a double rainbow. What can it mean? Sincerely. Thank you. So much. Oh, Kurt. The, the mighty Kurt Geisinger. $10 super chat. Thank you so much. Keeping the lights on. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, guys. I appreciate it, Kurt. You guys are awesome. Thanks for all the likes. Thanks for everything. So I think that's probably all I'm going to say about the journaling, except to say that it's still a little hard sometime. I I don't always have the big themes, but I am journaling again. I wrote a whole page today. I wrote it with my Watchman 52 and a half. I wish I could show you, but I film in 4K and you'll be able to read it. And it's... Um, Actually, it's a lot about what I did at work today. I had a really good day at work. Work is going splendidly, um, which is good. I have good good people at work, good people at home, good family. I'm going to get through this, and I can't wait to show you guys the scar. Um, that's a good analogy for life, too, because it leaves a mark, and you keep soldiering on. And I hope this channel provides some inspiration and helps some of you get through tough stuff too. Because there are things I enjoy that I turn on. I love In Our Time. I listen to it like, like the Rain Man watch Judge Wapner. So In Our Time is a podcast with um, a fellow named Melvin Bragg. Who talks about different concepts, different ideas, and does a show and brings academics in. I'm, I'm actually thinking about doing something like this on my channel. I want to do some more stuff. Once I get through all this, I want to do some more stuff on the channel. Something a little bit more academic or book oriented that would complement the channel. Where... I would release it on a different day or maybe do it once a month, but something else. I'm thinking about that. So very good stuff. So sometimes you, so you get silence, but you can find your voice again with the help of friends and the people who love you. That's the lesson tonight, guys. But I don't want you to worry about me or anything. I'm going to be kicking around a long time. But I did want to share that with you because I thought some of you might be going through the same thing. And it turns out you are. You are. And I'm going through it with you. So, and if you want to talk more, email me. Reach out. I'm around. I answer my emails. Sometimes not during the day if I get busy. But I'm thinking about it. I've probably seen it. Um, but I will definitely get back to you. So... I love this interaction that we have. So I want to plug a few more things. I don't know if you got to see me on Apple Boom Bites, but um, I've been co-hosting with Yost, and I had such a fun time, guys. We just interviewed uh, Francesco from um, Visconti, the CEO. That was really cool. So that episode will be coming out this weekend. He he dropped some world exclusives. Some things that haven't been released that he talked about. Really cool stuff. Yost is a really nice guy. And by the way, I like co-hosting. It's nice. I don't always want to be the center of attention. Uh, who am I kidding? Of course I do. But, <laughs> but sincerely, it was a lot of fun to be kind of just chiming in. Like Bill Hader with Tom Cruise in, in Tropical Thunder. You know, I was like the guy in the background. Like, Welcome to the goodie room. That was me. Are you following my obscure references? I certainly hope so. Waski Squirrel says, Book reviews are a good compliment to pens. That's something I do from time to time. I like to think of pen people as idea people. It's a good point. That's a good point. But I, I thought I would do something like that and maybe bring in some academics where we can talk about themes um, within it and just have a good time, like a roundtable discussion. 
That's what I'm thinking. So lots of nice comments, you guys. I do appreciate it. You're all very lovely. Allie J, you're the best. Thank you for your courage and sharing this, H Day. We all wish you the very best and be there with you too. And I'll be there for you, Allie, too. Happy to um to give you some distraction. You know, sometimes that's what I look for. Just to get me out of my head, you know, sometimes. Um Debbie's watching the uh Apple Boom videos. That's great. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I like to help other channels too. So, so alas, here we are. So now you see why I did not invite anyone on because I thought it might be more of a bummer than it was. I hope it wasn't a bummer for you to listen to this story of mine. I just really thought we could all go through this together. And I also thought I could kind of reach out to you guys too and let you know that I appreciate you all. And I derive strength from all of you as well. So I'm better for all of you guys being here. And I want to thank you for that. I do. Simon Krupa. Neil deGrasse Tyson would be a great guest. Neil deGrasse Tyson would be a great guest. I don't have that kind of star power. If anybody knows Mr. deGrasse Tyson and could get him to come on my channel, I would be delighted to have him. He's um, one of my favorite presenters. I, I just love the guy. And I'd love to chat pens with him. But um, I don't have that kind of star power. But if I did, I, I, there's some people I'd love to have on the channel. You, you know, Mary Beard. Oh boy, if I could get her on the channel. I don't even know if she writes with fountain pens. But who cares? We talk about Rome. Um, she knows so much more than I ever will. She forgot more about Rome than I'll ever know. Um, but I love people like that. Melvin Bragg, love to have him on. Really, really interesting stuff. Okay. Well, guys, I'm not going to prattle on. I think this is it for me uh, for the evening. <laughs> um, everything's fine. We got a great video coming out. On Thursday, I think I'm doing it Thursday. It's the Lamy 2000 review. Do me a favor and watch it. I think you'll enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. There's good and bad. I go into the history of it, who designed it, a bit about Bauhaus. It's got really cool music, by the way. There's this bit of jazz music I found I really like. It sort of sounds like Take 5. I think you guys are going to dig that. So, um, yes, that's what happens this weekend. Next weekend, I think, is Conway Stewart. And then there's some other big high concept stuff and more coming down the pike. So there you have it. So thank you all so much for watching. If you've made it to this point, then you have to subscribe. There's no watching for 50 something minutes and not subscribing. I'm sorry. It's not a big thing to ask. Just please do that. I'd love it. I mean, we're kind of knocking on 10,000. We're at like 84 and change, which means, you know, in another six months, we'll be at 10,000. <laughs> but it's exciting, right? That, that, to me, that means something. Um, I just really like it. So, so please come along on this journey with me, won't you? So anyway, guys, I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. We'll talk soon in the interim. Feel free to email. But I promise Thursday we'll see each other again. And then next Tuesday night, I'm always here. I appreciate you all. So I'll see you further up the road. Take care.